Our dreamer is a 27-year-old male okay. who is in the military. And he writes, The dream starts in a rundown house. In front of me, there is an unattractive woman and a good-looking guy making out on a sofa. I get bored and ask if we can go somewhere more interesting. They have evil grins on their face and say, Yes. We go to an abandoned factory-like complex. Meet an Asian man there who follows us down very deep underground. We climb down metal staircases and everything is pitch black. We get to the basement and there is a dark robed figure. It says, it's good that you came here, but come back tomorrow and all will be explained. The other people I'm with get disappointed. We leave the complex and I go home. The next day I get the call from the unattractive woman and she asks if I can pick her up for the meeting with the dark robed figure and I comply. When we arrive, she asks not to tell that she's here with me to the dark robed figure. I go to speak with the figure and he takes off his hood and it's my chief from the military unit who I get along with. We go down to the same basement and there are a lot of people, all looking like fighters. The dark road figure, we'll call him K, now says that I need to go first into the ring. I see my opponent. He's strong and fit and he's bad-mouthing me. He's saying how the fight's going to be so easy for him. The fight starts, he kicks me. I grab his leg, and I make a painful move on him. It's not to traumatize him, so I let go. He boasts how I was lucky while coming back to Kay. Kay is very disappointed and says that I should have finished the job. I still hear my opponent bad-mouthing me, and that angers me. So I grab a machete off the ground and start whacking my opponent and everyone else in the basement. Kay, the unattractive woman, the guy she was making out with, the Asian man who joined you. We kill a lot of people in that room and we are soaked in blood. And Kay says to me that it's finally time for me to meet him. He tells me to wait in the dark staircase that leads to the basement. The unattractive woman says to me, Whatever, don't look at them. I hear Kay's voice and two other distorted voices talking. But I only hear one set of footsteps that are walking on metal stairs. Figures start ascending the stairs with Kay. I get a glimpse through the corner of my eye that one of the black figures is smaller and the other bigger. The smaller one approaches me. I don't look at its face. I only look at its feet. But I only see some sort of dark smoke. The smaller figure says to me, You are interesting tells the other bigger figure to approach me. I feel immense pressure around me. The dark figure grabs my chin and says it's fine to look at him. I look at where the face is supposed to be and I wake up. He gives us a bit of context and writes that he is currently on a path to change his career and that he had some relationships, problems with a crush that he was talking to. He says the main feelings in the dream were, surprisingly, that he didn't feel fear or scared, even though the dream looks quite dark and cruel and gloomy. But he was feeling relaxed and even in some sort of a bliss. And then he adds that he really wants to know more about the dark figures 
that appeared, also the Asian fellow and the unattractive girl and the good-looking guy. And he says that the only figure that he met in real life was the dark-robed figure that turned out to be Kay, whom he actually knew. So one just little bit that I'm, I know we've said many times in the podcast that um, this guy's 27 Mm. and he is moving towards his first Saturn return Mm -hmm. astrologically. And and I don't think of myself as uh, an overly knowledgeable astrologer. I'm kind of an armchair cocktail party astrologer, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, just enough to be entertaining. But that right about every 27 to 30 years, Saturn returns to the same position it held at the moment of your birth. And it's said that there is a a kind of spiritual activation that happens inside of us that can be very challenging, but it does forward our growth, often by awakening an internal pressure. So I'm thinking about this guy going down into the unconscious and encountering this dark figure that initiates him into this enormous amount of shadow. And it reminds me of Saturn or Kronos there in the underworld, Mm. um, forcing him to know something. And that even though in a naturalistic way the images are frightening, but psychologically it's almost blissful for him to come into contact with all of this dynamism that is somewhere in the unconscious. It's, um, you know, with this this dream uh, made me remember the movie Fight Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking for transcendence uh, through violence. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that may seem like such a, an impossible thing to even conceive of or say, but um, violence is a way of achieving transformation. Mm-hmm. You know, when we kill something, it is transformed. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, you know, we conquered the Wild West, politicians um, running for office talk about how they're going to fight for you, their constituents. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very alive in our culture um, and certainly in the psyche. And here is the descent. Our dream ego has a descent. Uh, they go into this basement, uh, and there's a dark robe figure who is our dreamer's military chief, his, um, the officer, I guess, to whom he reports. But anyway, a a figure who is senior to the dream ego. And um, so he gets along well with them. They all go down. Um, The opponent thinks the fight will be easy. And our dream ego says, um, I make a painful move on him not to traumatize him. So I let go. Uh, And then. K, his superior officer, the dark robe figure, says, you should have finished the job. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have let him off. And the opponent is still bad-mouthing. And then there's this whole um, melee of uh, the ugly woman, K, the guy she made out with, the Asian man, um, and it, it's a, a real bloody a real bloody mess. I am very curious as to what needs to be battled. What, what is the fight in the psyche that is taking place down below in this basement uh, with these other dream figures against an unknown opponent? Uh, and 
The smaller figure says at the end, you're interesting. And our dream ego feels immense pressure around me. And the dark figure says, it's fine to look at him. So I'm wondering about the archetype of battle Mm -hmm. and of fighting to the finish and some kind of heroic uh, aura that this has taken on, you know, in the dream. Well, I, I take your point that, well, one, there is something in the unconscious that he must encounter. Mm-hmm. Um, that's undeniable. I, I want to just come back to the beginning of the dream for a moment as we then talk about what's going on in the basement. <laughs> Jung talked about, in very general terms, that there are three stages of development. One is shadow work. The second stage is the anima animus work, this encounter with the contrasexual. And if we then can blend with these opposite personality qualities, then we set the stage for the incarnation of the self, which is the fullness of the personality. So it starts, and the dream ego is seeing the beginning of a connection between the feminine and the masculine. These people are making out on the sofa. <laughs> if that were to continue, maybe there would uh, come a more intimate kind of union. But the dream ego can't relate to that. And he says, ugh, I need something more interesting. So it seems like there is a bid for him to become interested in this anima animus yeah. integration. But for him, that the female or the feminine is not attractive enough. It's troubling to him, which may have something to do with you know, work that he needs to do with his inner feminine. But because he cannot relate to the conjunctio, he can't relate to the integration of the anima, then he is sent back to do more shadow work, which is how, how it happens we have to integrate enough shadow in order to move on to the next stage of development towards individuation. And they say, sure, we we will lead you to this other piece of work for you. And then, of course, we go into the underground and there is a, there is a test. Yeah. So it's an artificial battle at first because there's a ring and there's a boxing ring or some kind of a context and he's sparring and he's using his sparring skills just as one might do let's say in in a dojo or a karate studio you're not supposed to actually hurt the people you're training with but you're practicing his skillful moves he kicks grabs the legs you know, he gives the guy a little twist, let's say, a little mm-hmm. pain. He, he doesn't want to, to really injure someone because he's just sparring. But there's something inside of the psyche that says, this isn't a game. Ah. You can't just spar with your life. You are really in a battle with something inside of yourself, and one, you could say that the psyche wants him to know something about his own lethality. The psyche needs him to come out of this encounter with a full sense of responsibility for the way in which he can be dangerous, and to not, not hedge about it, not, not make any silliness. That you, you are capable of being very dangerous, perhaps as a military person, but also just as a human being. Now, it seems that he needs someone to give him permission. That his natural tendency is to just spar, but K, I'm not sure exactly what K represents inside of him, says, no, you have to 
finish the job. And then somehow he has access to anger, which was not present earlier. And then he's able to, to go into this great kind of berserker mode mm-hmm. yes, with the Vikings. It, it, yeah, exactly. It's, it does feel very much um, like berserker mode. Of that, is this really the, the something about a battle? Of our dream ego is sparring at first, and then it shifts into this berserker uh, kind kind of process of uh, that everything it, there's a machete and there's blood everywhere. They kill everybody in the room. Maybe the dream is raising the question of. What are you fighting? What are you fighting for? What are you fighting against? H- how do you fight? Where is the difference between sparring, not taking it really seriously enough, versus just going berserk? Um, that it's not, this is not a warrior stance that our dream ego is uh, evidencing. But you wax the opponent and everyone else. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's uh, somewhat indiscriminate. And uh, in the comments, he says that he is uh, currently on a path to change his career. And mm-hmm. as you noted, um, the time of the first Saturn return, which as it just so happens, um, astrology aside or not, uh, happens in the late 20s. There is a real realignment and redirection of uh, what am I doing? I've been out there oftentimes in my first career or continuing education or traveling or a hundred things. And then there's a reorientation along around our our late 20s of Oh, I need a new orientation, a new stance, a new attitude. And uh, and I wonder if that is very much what's happening for our dream ego of how do we how do we engage? How do we how do we fight? What do we fight for? Who are we fighting? Mm-hmm. Uh, we usually find out that we're fighting ourselves. Um, So it feels like our dream ego is just approaching this uh, reorientation that's going to take energy. It's going to call him Mm -hmm. to engage. So if I step away from some of the lurid imagery and I just (laughs) sit with the bones of it, Uh um, I'm only sparring. Some other internal figure says, but you're not finishing your jobs. He gets angry and then he goes wild. So this is a situation that many of us find ourselves in at times in our lives. Mm -hmm. There is a task set before us that we just can't finish. Mm -hmm. We can't get any traction on. Maybe it's finishing your dissertation. You did all your PhD work and your Mm -hmm. ABD, all but dissertation. And there's a final battle, kind of write that dissertation, or there's you know some very complicated certification that you would need to take to become a, a you know a project manager at a whole new level, mm-hmm. um, and you'll spar with doing your dissertation. You'll pretend that you're going to mm-hmm. take this very complicated project management certification, um, and then something is science says. You, you're not finishing the job. When are you going to finish the job? <laughs> and then mm-hmm. there's a there's a provocation. You know, the opponent starts bad mouthing him and said, "Yeah, you're a loser." This and that, which of course happens inside of us. But it's access to anger, and anger is, in general, that energy that allows us to push through an obstacle. It gives us enough redness to get the engine going. We have to get angry at enough in ourselves for being avoidant, that we kind of do the job that we've been avoiding doing. 
uh, as you had said, Deb, that um, this doesn't seem to be very skilled. So <laughs> everything's getting whacked um, without discrimination. Um, although it does seem adequate enough for him to take some kind of next step, which we don't understand. Yeah. The dream ends with a smaller dark figure saying to the dream ego, you are interesting. Mm -hmm. And then he tells the other bigger dark figure, the man's military superior, K, to approach. He says, I feel immense pressure around me. The dark figure grabs my chin and says, it's okay to look at him. Mm -hmm. Uh, so something with our dream ego's engagement has created this ending mm -hmm. of now the dark figure, his military superior, K, they're looking face to face and eye to eye as a result first of this descent, then the sparring, and then this berserker sort of bloodbath with anger and feeling. So, no, it's not very skilled <laughs> of just grab a machete and start whacking at every, everybody around you. No, not skilled. And it is maybe a first necessary stage of engagement. Mm -hmm. But he still ends up feeling pressured, mm -hmm. as often happens when we don't get the job done. Yeah. So I got really angry, and then I started, I don't know, furiously reading a bunch of books and then I wrote a bunch of paragraphs and then I and then I threw it all away and then I wrote it again and then you know at the end of it I, I actually just ripped up my entire dissertation that I had worked on because it wasn't good enough and then all of a sudden I feel a lot of pressure. You're 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 re evoking everyone's thesis experience here. No. But I think I think that's an important distinction that the feeling of anger gets him activated, mm -hmm. not in a skilled way, and right. that is different from the job that needs to be done. Of what is the job you're here to do, and where is there some kind of a different choice between a kind of fooling around sparring and going berserk? Um, and I'm perceiving the end of the dream uh, as a very positive comment that the dark mm -hmm. figure grabs my chin and says, it's okay to look at him. Look at me. Right. He has a positive relationship with this man in waking life. Uh, it's a superior. So this may be a kind of initiatory dream. Of, this is what mm -hmm. the first engagement looks like. It's messy. Right. That's and okay. That <laughs> his first task was actually something we often all have to do when we're not getting the job done. Is we go into the unconscious and there's an inner figure that's just bad mouthing us. <laughs> that's you know, like yes. we go to write the thesis and someone's like, You big dummy, yeah, you don't know you what you're you doing. Are. Who do you think you are? <laughs> and then something in the psyche says, I think you need to do battle with the bad mouther yeah. and triumph over him. And then you'll get the job done. Yeah. Um, so he, he goes at the bad mouther. He does seem to win that battle. But of course, now the dissertation's in pieces. Mm -hmm. Everything's soaked in blood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it may be possible that he did triumph over the bad mouther, even though there's a lot of cleanup that's yes. got to happen down there. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, oh, overall, I think this is a really, it's an encouraging dream of where's the battle, what kind of fight is called for, what kind of job needs to get done here. He's 27, and it's, he's embarking on a new career, a new life path. He's right on track, right on time. And we never know exactly where Psyche is going. Absolutely. But it seems to be that the wildness has calmed down and there's a couple of internal, I suppose, authority figures mm -hmm. 
that are ostensibly going to help reorganize a little yeah. bit of something. I also want to offer one more amplification that I think is interesting, is that everything is soaked in blood, but it's the inner feminine that um, gives him advice, which, which is often what the anima will do mm-hmm. inside of a man's psyche. Although he's been swinging the machete around, creating all kinds of carnage, the inner feminine says, whatever you do, don't look at them. She's still trying to help him. And it reminds me of the um, uh, fairy tale or myth of Kulhanan, which in Irish mythology, Kulhanan was this amazing warrior and was responsible for protecting all of Ireland. But what would happen is when he would go into war, that he would enter into a kind of unstoppable frenzy, which was incredibly helpful. But as he went from battle to battle to battle, Kulhanin would start just turning on his own, his own men and just go into yeah. a killing frenzy. And then there is one time where they just cannot stop him. But he is the perfect warrior, so no one can stop him. And what they decide is they need to find the most beautiful woman in the village who is able to slowly approach him and touch him and bring him back from the Mm. frenzy of war. And there's just a little bit of that in the dream. Not exactly the same, but in the end, on the field of battle, that there is a feminine figure that's still there with him, trying to give him advice. Now, he doesn't take the advice, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. He finds the woman not attractive, which I think is another piece of growth that he needs to to take on. Yeah. Because she may be quite right that even though the figure says, look me in the eyes, but his soul said, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Something, something that's not good for you might happen. Uh, so, and his work right now, his work right now may be much more with, with shadow figures than it, mm. than it is with his inner feminine, the inner opposite with his anima. Uh, it may be, you know, on the battleground. Mm-hmm of where his life is moving now uh and and the model in waking life that k the dark robed figure uh presents for him Mm -hmm. he may be more on hero's journey mode uh for the time being Mm because at the end of the dream i'm not sure whether it is the anima figure who says don't look at them whose advice should be heeded, mm-hmm. or whether it's the dark robe figure at the end who says, it's okay to look at me, mm-hmm. of to look at shadow. Um, we don't know, and we can just imagine that more dreams will be shedding more direction, light, and insight yeah, on this life passage for this dreamer. Absolutely. He's in the middle of a a really intense process. Yeah. Yeah.